Problems in Child Rearing Another excerpt from How to Rear a Child The first thing to remember is Never reduce the child into a thing by any of your efforts. Instead give him individuality. Also do not impose personality on him. Individuality each child brings with him while the personality is being imposed by the parents, the society, the educational system and the church. There are many foremost mistakes in bringing up children. However, I will talk only about the most important ones. Once you understand these, then the rearing becomes natural and spontaneous. There is an idea that children belong to you. Certainly they come through you. You have been a passage but they do not belong to you. They are not your possessions. Instead, this idea of possessiveness gives rise to many blunders. Once you start thinking that children are your possessions, you have reduced them to things. Remember, only things can be possessed, not human beings. It is ugliest to conceive children as your possession. And those poor children are so helpless and dependent on you that they cannot rebel in any way. They accept whatever your idea is about the child upbringing. And to protect your possessiveness, you make them a Christian or a Hindu or a Jew or a Muslim or a Buddhist the moment they are born. You cannot wait for the child to develop his sense and also you cannot see the absolute absurdity of it. There is an age for voting. For a driving permit there is a prescribed age and qualification. However, for religion there seems to be no age at all. As soon as the child is born, he has not started speaking, you impose religion on the child. It seems you have reduced your religion to lower than even your ugliest politics. And you keep religion even lower than the politics. The child cannot even understand the language and he is circumcised. He is told that he is a Jew. He is baptized without any consent from his side for the simple reason that you do not need any consent from your furniture where to put it, to keep it or through it. You are behaving with your children in the same way like things, your possessions. If the parents are really alert, conscious and caring, they will wait for the child to grow up so that he can choose. If he feels like becoming a Christian, he is free. If he feels like becoming a Buddhist, he is free. But he should choose only when he decides. Indeed, if 21 is the age for voting, then for religion, 42 should be the minimum age when people can decide. And in fact, at this time religion becomes important. By the time you attain the age of 42, you have lived life. You have seen all the seasons of life. Therefore, 42 is a very important turning point in life. You have to decide whether you will continue the same routine life or you will bring a new dimension to it. And that new dimension is the dimension of religion. If you choose to be religious, I mean simply religious, not belonging to any organization or church 
or group, then it is perfectly good. He has in fact chosen freedom. Indeed, religion is personal, intimate and absolutely one's own affair. Nobody should interfere in it, but parents start interfering from the very beginning. Why is there so much hurry? The parents and the society is worried that later on the child will argue or he may ask why is he a Jew or a Christian or a Hindu. No child is born a Jew or a Hindu or a Christian. All children are born innocent as a clean slate. Nothing is written on them. Just there is pure innocence. The first thing to remember is never reduce the child into a thing by any of your efforts. Instead give him individuality. Also do not impose personality on him. Individuality each child brings with him while the personality is imposed by the parents, the society, the educational system and the church. If you understand this, then you will not impose anything on the child. Instead, you will help the child to be himself. Certainly, it is difficult. That is why all the societies down the ages have chosen the simple path of imposing something on the child. Then he is obedient instead of being rebellious. He does not give you any trouble. He is not a nuisance. But if you give him total freedom and help him to be free and individual, he is going to give you trouble about many things. People have chosen to destroy the child rather than accept the troubles. If you are so much afraid of troubles, then it is better not to give birth to a child, but to give birth to a living being and then to destroy it just for your peace of mind is indeed inhuman. Children are the most enslaved class of people in the inhuman society, the most exploited one. They are ex being exploited for their own sake. If the child feels freedom around the parents and elders, certainly he is going to ask questions which you do not have any clues to and your ego will never allow you to accept this and say, I do not know the answer. It is better to force the child to keep his mouth shut instead of accepting your ignorance. Each parent continuously tells the children, shut up, sit silently. When you grow old, you will know the answer. Or elders and the parents do the same thing. Children are very inquisitive and observant. However, parents go on postponing the answer because they do not know the answer to the innocent questions of a child. I repeat this. However, parents go on postponing the answers because they do not know the answers to the innocent questions of a child. Also, they are embarrassed to accept their ignorance. This is part of rearing they have inherited. Remember, accepting your ignorance is the first step towards wisdom and then innocence. I remember as a child asking such questions as who am I or where I come from or how do I come from etc. And they used to tell me the same thing in my childhood year after year. I continue to ask the same question and once I even asked I am growing 
but your answer remains the same shut up and when you grow up you will know can you please tell me at least what at what age i will know the answer it was only my nani mother's mother who used to answer my various questions to satiate my inquisitiveness she was nakshbandi sufi master it is because of her strategic methodology that today i am capable to respond to any question from the seekers world over verily this book is the outcome of that childhood rearing that i received however my parents did never satiate my inquisitiveness my nana naqshbandi sufi sheikh had instructed that i spend most of my time in the company of my nani alike other children my parents never answered my questions and when i was 15 i said i have been hearing this for 10 years in 10 years nothing has changed and i suspect that even in a 100 years nothing is going to change my question will remain and there is not going to be any answer and you cannot look directly into my eyes you also do not know the answer but you do not have the guts to accept this either he was taken aback shocked but he thought that it would be better to say something because it was going to happen again and again it was only then he said you are right i am sorry i do not know the answer to your questions i was just postponing these i was hoping that you would forget all about it you better ask all your questions from your nani not me and that is how it has been all along i had also asked the same question and was told again and again when you grow up you will know until my schooling i stayed with my parents except during the school vacations i will visit my grandmother things changed when i entered the college and i had to move to the city where my grandmother nani lived those days were of tremendous significance benediction and learning an individual child is troublesome because he is alive and intelligent and he can expose your ignorance certainly you are ignorant in almost all basic points of life this has been the outcome of the missing link in our education system meditation after coming out of universities spending nearly 25 to 27 years of precious life you do not have answers to the basic questions that life poses on a day to day basis do you really know god do you really know why jesus christ was the only begotten son of god do you know that there is a hell and heaven beyond this life do you know why krishna did not kill the demon serpent king kaliya instead krishna instructed the serpent king to go elsewhere i was never given satisfactory answers my grandmother was quite unique whenever i complained to her about not giving answers to my questions her response was the methodology of a buddha i do not she said i do not want to give you ready made answers these will not satiate you instead i am preparing you so that one day you discover the answers to such questions yourself your grandfather the sufi sheikh has given you everything and one day you will be able to answer those myriad questions from seekers world over therefore never seek answers to questions instead seek 
that knowing which everything becomes known. I emphasize. Therefore, never seek answers to questions. Instead, seek that knowing which everything becomes known. This is your awareness. No ready-made question can ever satiate anyone. You have to seek the answers deep within your inner silence and harmony. This is enlightenment. What do you know? Do you know yourself? Who you are? You know nothing except the name which is a label glued to you after you were born except your profession that you are a doctor or an engineer or a scientist or a professor. But this is not your being. This is your profession. Your profession and being are two separate things. Are two separate things. Being is your innerness. Being subsists on awareness. It reflects inner light and your name and profession represents your exterior. The whole society has been living in utter ignorance and perpetuating it by not allowing children to be individual seekers. Remember it is through individual seeking that one comes to know who he is and whether there is any God or just a fiction. He comes to know whether his life is eternal or just confined to seventy years. Only experience. But experience needs inquiry and search. But all of that is being hindered by the parents, by the teachers and by the priests. Each parent either says to you, you will get it when you are old enough, or gives a fictitious answer which the innocent child cannot argue against. They say that God created the world. Every child asks, who created the world? Every child is being told God, is, God created the world. Do you really know? Were you a witness when God was creating the world? Was there any witness at the time of creation? If there is no witness, then what is the ground on which you are basing your facts? And stupidity knows no limits. Albert Einstein says human stupidity is infinite. This is one of the most significant remarks of Albert Einstein. He said two things are infinite in the universe. The first is the universe and the second is human stupidity. Of the first, we are not sure, but we are certain of the second, the human stupidity. Only this much on the second talk, problems in child rearing.